Howdy, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Jeff Bartsch here with Story Greenlight, where we are all about helping storytellers become empowered to tell the stories that they care about the most. I am super glad you're here, and here's what we're going to be talking about today. We are going to be talking about the most dangerous number. There is a number that is incredibly dangerous to any creative or entrepreneur. Don't pay attention to this, and uh, you can be in serious, serious trouble. But the thing is, you don't have to. It doesn't have to happen. It's like this fate can, <laughs> this fate does not have, does not need to be yours. So uh, we're going to be talking about how to make that not happen for you, and of course, going to be talking about your thoughts and your Q and A, because frankly, I'm, I, I have never wanted this to be just me blabbing into a camera or a webcam in this case, and uh, it, I, I want to know what you guys think, so let's, uh, let's be talking about this. And I will say, here's why this matters to you. Uh, it is really easy to just get focused on what we're doing, whether it's just creating content or doing client work, and it's really easy to lose sight of things that can sneak up on us and we just have no idea until boom, uh, we, we get nailed by it. So. It's uh, a lot of the times it's, it's, it's easy to cut these risks way down just by being aware of them, just literally by being aware of them. So that's what I want to talk about uh, for, for today. Echo, echo, it says. Um, oh, okay, here we go. One sec. Okay, I am stand by for the echo. There is something going on. Stand by, everyone. Um, okay. Ah, okay, all right. Okay, so I know that there is a bit of a, I know there's a bit of a, it's a pretty significant delay on these things, so I'm just gonna hang. I just wanna make sure, okay. So everyone, everyone everyone's okay here? <laughs> What's up, Dave? It, it was, I had a little overzealous and had two windows open. It's like, okay, well, I'm gonna assume, I'm going to assume that Y'all are okay. Ah, it's very quiet, says William. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you stop, when I stop talking. <laughs> oh, do you know what? And I've been cranking so hard. I've been cranking like a crazy man this morning. Um, been working on this. This is what just, uh, this is just, just one section of the show that I'm working on right now. I'm actually working on, uh, I'm, actually, I've, I found out I'm allowed to say this right now. Um, I, I, can, I can show you what I'm working on. I am currently, this is my, this is my current home away from home. Uh, American Ninja Warrior, if you're not familiar with it, is a massive, massive television show on NBC. And so the thing that I do for Ninja is I edit their, uh, I edit their athlete profile pieces. So. I've been cranking this morning just to make things, just, just to get everything done in time so I can actually be here and be present for all of you. So um, I am going to, so if you'll excuse me, I, I didn't even plug in my, uh, didn't even plug in my laptop and clearly I'm going to need to do that. So begging your patience. See, this is why this is why I always make sure I, I, I have I, I have on my on my show notes I always have a note for myself to check in on audio and, and picture to check in on the comments even though I don't want to hundred percent engage like right away because I don't want to be that guy with squirrel brain like say, hey here's what I'm gonna be talking about hey hi 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 you know I just don't don't want to be that guy but uh, you know what sometimes things just go off the rails and that's where we are right now so I'm gonna plug this guy in. 
and string some cable over. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're back. We are back. Um, <laughs> okay, look at, just looking at the comments. Everyone's, everyone's sounding good. Everyone sound, said it sounded good. Very good, very good. And all right. All right, so back to our previously scheduled content. Here we go. So uh, as I said, as I said before, uh, we're going to be talking about the most dangerous number for any creative or entrepreneur and how to fix it. And uh, I will, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is something that affects us all, uh, usually without us knowing it. So, uh, and, and the great news is it is really, really easy to uh, take care of this without, uh, it, it's really easy to take care of it without uh, a huge amount of effort. So, here is, here is what we're going to be doing. So, uh, just said what we're going to be doing. Can you tell my brain's a little scattered right now? But that is all good. I'm glad, you, I'm glad we're all here. In case you are new here, I usually have my act a little bit more together than this. Um, my name is Jeff Barch, and uh, this is my... Uh, I'm, this is a little bit about me. This is my background. I've built my career here in Los Angeles doing broadcast television editing and... Uh, I have personally contributed to thousands of hours of Finnish television. It's kind of my thing. It's what I do. And uh, I have learned a lot along the way about communication and telling stories. And I absolutely love, number one, I love telling stories. And I love helping people like you tell the stories that you care about the most. That is in the entire mission of this channel. To help you tell the, to help you tell the stories that you care about the most. And so, uh, if that's something that you're into and you haven't done so already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and hit the bell so you know when streams like this are coming up and so you won't miss a single video. Because frankly, I don't put out enough content to get annoying with the notifications. So just kick that bell, as our friend Cody Warner. A karate kick that bell, as Cody likes to say. So let's, um, let's dig in on this. And, and yes, what's update? Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Yes, indeed. So let's dig into this. The number one, the number one dangerous number for any creative or entrepreneur is this. It is the number one. And here's what I mean by this. We're talking about the danger of only one dot dot dot. Fill in the blank. I'm talking like only one project, only one editing sequence in what you're doing with, only one camera file in existence. God help us all if you only have one copy of your camera master and something happens to that file. <laughs> Bad news. If you, only, if you are doing client work and you only have one client, if you're in a pitch meeting and you only have one idea or, or you're on a communication platform like YouTube, and you only have one communication platform, which you may or may not even own. God knows I have no ownership stake in YouTube or Google. I don't think any of us here on the stream do either. So here's the thing. Let's, I mean, let's, let's just, let's, let's break this down. Let's break this down a little bit. So let's talk about something near, near and dear to many of our hearts, just the idea of editing. It's easy, especially if you have, uh, it's easy, especially if, if you're doing daily content, which if you are, instant respect to you, you have to be a special kind of crazy to put out daily content. But even if it's just uh, like multiple times a week, uh, it's it, it's easy to just it's it, it's easy to just say uh, to, to not pay attention to a lot of details. Um, now, sometimes you know, for for myself, 
I never, when I'm editing, I never, ever, ever, ever want to throw away any work that I've ever done, especially if I'm in the middle of editing a piece. And so I will always, uh, usually like if, you know, definitely if I'm working on something like this, um, I'm going to put away, uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to create a brand new sequence at the beginning of the day, if there are significant changes during, during the day, I will duplicate that sequence and I will save the earlier version. Which for some people here might seem like editing 101. I, I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you there are people who will be, who, who are here, who will be like, oh, you mean you can have more than one copy of a timeline or of a sequence or whatever your editing software tends to call it? Yes, you can. And yes, you should because it's called butt coverage. Because if you hit the wrong button and all of a sudden like you've been cutting for six hours straight or for 12 hours straight like I did just a couple nights ago after my collab with Cody, turning, my, turning this video around, that was nuts. Um, and you hit the wrong keystroke and all that stuff goes poof you will want to jump out the window <laughs> unless you have some kind of a unless you have some kind of a backup so uh, certainly when you're editing you want to save multiple versions of copy uh, multiple versions of your sequences and of your projects as you're going along let me just double check that everything is let's double check that everything's good hello everyone william said yeah man call me crazy yes william you're crazy but in the most loving way possible you are awesome crazy for going daily um let's see here let's uh, so let's let's talk about another example of the danger of one if you are doing if you are uh, doing client work if you're in a business uh, and you only have one client now for those of you who are uh, as into the idea of business development and you know, just general learning as I am, you're probably, you're, you're probably familiar with the idea of the Pareto Principle, the 80-20 rule. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Vilfredo Pareto, he was a, an, an economist who lived in Italy back in the 19th century. And he, uh, he's, he's known for what is called the Pareto Principle. And basically, he says that 80% of the output of any given scenario comes from 20% of the input. And he discovered this when he was out in his garden. And he was, uh, he was counting the pea pods and his pea plants in his garden. And he was, real, and he was seeing that 80% of the pea pods in his garden came from 20% of the plants. And he's like, huh, this is interesting. And he, he, he connected the dots later on that 80% of the land in Italy at that time was controlled by 20% of the people, of, 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 was owned by 20% of the people. And you can actually go, you can go on to, you can go on and extrapolate that. And usually it's the idea of the, the few inputs, the few, uh, the few catalysts have huge proportional effect across any given spectrum, including on YouTube, um, Tim Schmoyer has said uh, that, uh, ac according to his sources at YouTube, um, there is literally 95% of the traffic on YouTube goes to 5% of the users of the, of the channels on YouTube. So we're not talking like 80-20 here, it's literally 95-5, sometimes even more. And so the reason I'm going here is because when you're talking about client work and you have only one client, um, I, well, I'll just say right here, like this edit bay where I'm sitting right now, you know, my, my edit bay here, my, my home away from home, this is, uh, you know, I, I'm here working for one company that has provided, like if you look at my resume, if you look at my credit list, I have, I've, I've done over 80% of my professional paid work in the last 10 years with this one company. Now, that is amazing. That is incredible. It is also very dangerous because if something happens to this company, you know, like you, you never know, like you can, you, you, it just recently happened on the show Roseanne, the reboot of the show Roseanne, 
everyone's like, oh, this show gets to come back. And all of a sudden, you, the next thing you know, the star of the show sends out some crazy tweets and the network says, the show's gone. It's done. You're like, it's, it's totally out of your control. Rug pulled out from under you. So you have to be careful about relying only on one client, which is why you have to make sure that you end up, um, which is why you need to end up actively developing relationships beyond just the, just the big, uh, just, just the big rocks in the jar, as it were. If you are going into a night, into a pitch meeting, if you're going into a pitch meeting, uh, uh, like if you're pitching a collaboration with another creator, if you have a screenplay that you're pitching to a production company, and certainly if you have a, uh, a, a, a pitch that you're taking to a network, for selling a television show, the overwhelming likelihood is that the answer is going to be no. And then second, their, 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 their response is going to be, not, it's like, it's not really feeling this one, what else you got? Please do not ever put yourself in a position of being in a pitch meeting and say and being asked what else you got and you're like um, this is my only thing. I was really kind of hoping you'd say yes because that's, that's just... That's no bueno. That, I mean, you could, you could actually have made a deal happen if you had the right offer to follow up. But if there's nothing else to follow up, that's, that, that can be bad. And the other thing, the other thing is uh, the idea of like one communication platform. Man, oh man, everyone, like I, I just heard I just heard today, uh, and, and, and chime in on this if you've heard anything corroborating, um, Sean Duras, huge YouTuber by the name of Sean Duras, I heard today that his channel got hacked and a bunch of his videos got deleted. And holy moly, it was just like, the, just, the, just the thought of that happening. Man, oh man, it's just... What, what do you do? It's like there's nothing you can do except maybe if you have some sort of a hookup, like some connection at YouTube and they can go back in their servers and recover th some sort of backups. But man, you'd have to be high connected for something like that to, for something like that to happen. But, but here's the thing. Like, if your livelihood or if what you're building is based around a group of people and the group of people only live in one place, what happens if that place goes away? What happens if YouTube or Facebook says, our, our, our algorithm is, it has currently, you know, is currently the color orange, but we're going to turn it the color blue. And that completely shuts off all your traffic. What are you going to do, especially if you're relying on income? And if there's no way for you to contact your audience at that point, God have mercy on your creator's soul. <laughs> know what I'm saying? So uh, let's see here. It's, I'm seeing, let, let, seeing some... Uh, uh, do 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 I uh, have a backup plan when pitching, says Jared. Hi, Jared. Good to see you, man. Um, William says, apparently Sean's videos are back, but he still doesn't have control. Oh, bad news. Oh, gives me chills, man. So, so it, here, here's some ideas. Here's, uh, here's, here's what, yes, actually, I just saw your, your, your thought. Your, your, your extra comment come in there, William. Like, that's what happened to Spanky Valentine, that's uh, also known as Swoop. Yes. Yeah, she lost, like, <laughs> she put up a video saying how I lost 600,000 subscribers overnight. Oh. So here's the thing. Here's how to protect against that. Uh, obviously, you, I mean, the, the audience here, uh, y'all are intelligent people. Uh, like above average, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, this like I've noticed that the interactions uh, that we have on the channel here are very thoughtful, for which I am super excited. I'm stoked about that. Um, but here, here's some here here's some suggestions. It's, it's not enough just to say diversify. It's like, well, how does that work? 
if you have, so like if you do have a meeting with someone, for instance, um, many of you know uh, my, my friend Cody Warner, uh, who's also a friend of yours. And uh, he was in Los Angeles this past week and uh, he had hit me up the week prior saying, dude, I want to do a collab in LA with you. I'm like, great, let's do it. And uh, so what I did later on, uh, I, I, uh, I, I sent a couple story pitches to him. And so it wasn't just the, hey, what do you think we should do? It was like, good grief. Like when you want to collaborate with someone, do not say, hey, what do you want to do? Um, I mean, that might work depending on your relationship, but whenever you're in doubt, just in general, um, make an offer, see how you can be of value, see how you can make your collaborator look good. So that was my aim. It was like when I, I, I sent two pitches over to Cody and it's like, Hey, here's, here's what I'm thinking about some of these. And he's like, I like them both. I like the first one better. Let's go that. And, uh, so that's what we did when it comes to, uh, when it comes to client work, for instance, even though, even though the bulk of my income comes from this one company, the production company behind American Ninja Warrior here on NBC. Um, and even that, get, get this, it gets even crazier. The bulk of my work with this one production company comes through one executive with whom I've worked for the last 10 years. And we, we just click, we get each other and we work together really, really well, but it's one guy. So I actually have a, uh, I have a networking document uh, that I keep open in Word on my laptop. And every day I, I make a point of saying, it's like, okay, how can I actively network? How can I actively develop a relationship without, and, and, and nine out of 10 times, it's not me asking for anything. It's me saying, how can I bring value to someone? And that's something that I ask constantly. And uh, I would recommend, I would recommend the same thing for you. And uh, if, if you haven't been doing anything like that, the constant asking, Daily, how can I bring value to someone? How can I have a positive touch in this relationship? How can I move things forward? Um, and also, just in terms of the uh, communication platform, many of you know, many of you know that um, I, you know, I have a YouTube channel here. Um, I actually have a placeholder channel on Instagram, which I've yet to figure out the best way to approach that because frankly, my discretionary time for engaging in social media is very limited, but I'm still figuring out how that's going to work. Um, I'm, I'm realizing that I am capable of much more than I expect. And so are you just saying. Um, but one of the things that I'm actively doing is I'm building an email list. So if YouTube blew up tomorrow or YouTube says that our orange algorithm is blue and all of your people no longer get notifications, no, you no longer have subscribers, the, 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 the folks who are serious about telling their stories and growing in that are signing up to my email list. And I will tell you, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you how to do that. The number one way to do that is by getting this. There is a link in the description below this video that talks about this checklist that is the 27 questions that, uh, that I have built up over 20 years of editing. Uh, the ideas of how, how you actually make your video content everything you want it to be. And so if you want to, uh, number one, if you are a creator and you're hearing the sound of my voice, you must get this. No questions asked. You need this in your life. And the reason I can say that as confidently as I, as I am is because this is my checklist and I put it together. But when I actually put together the video training that really breaks down each question in depth and helps you, uh, lays out a plan for you to put this stuff into place with your own content, I actually went through all those questions myself and I just sat there laughing because it completely changed the way I was approaching this video course. So like my own content, my own checklist, when I used it, it made, it changed everything for me in the process of putting the video course together, which there, the link for that, uh, if you want my help in applying these questions in detail with specific examples to your own content, you can get a link to that down below.
So anyway, so that's what that, but when you download that, that checklist, that's how you get on the Story Greenlight email list and you become a Story Greenlight insider. And that is the core, that is the core of the people who are engaging with, with the channel. And uh, it's super cool. It's super cool to engage uh, on more than just one, one platform like that. So that, by the, so that is, that is, that is some thought, that, that is some thought on the most dangerous number for, uh, that, for, for the most dangerous number for any creative or entrepreneur. Um, that, and that's, those are some thoughts on how to minimize the risk of that dangerous number one. And by the way, uh, if you're here and you're finding any of this valuable, hit that thumbs up button. Tell the algorithm gods that there are good things happening here and uh, that'll be cool and maybe more folks can join in on the party. So, what are your thoughts? I would like to get your thoughts on the most dangerous number and if you have any examples from your end of things. We're going to get into your own, into your Q&A as well. And while you're, while you're talking, while you're talking about this, uh, while you're thinking and typing, I I, I want to I want to put out a number an an extra thing, an extra dangerous number one that I'm seeing a lot, and this is the number one and only asking one question, and a lot of it like I hear a lot of this coming from creators saying the number one question that I need to answer is what do I want to do? What do I want to create? Now, I'm going to say I'm 100% on board needing, needing to be in personal, mental, emotional, and spiritual alignment with the, the ways that you're putting in your energy and, and your effort. The thing is, if that is the only question you ask about your content, you are way, way short of the mark of having your content be everything that it can be. Because, you know, put it this way, I actually, uh, I, where was I listening to this? I was listening to an audiobook, which is my number one way of, of, of reading, quote unquote. I, uh, I, I listen to audiobooks, usually in the car when I'm commuting. Um, it was, it, it, it was, I forget the name of the book, but it was talking about um, neuroscience and how, oh, it's actually called How Emotions Are Built, How Emotions Are Constructed. Uh, it's really interesting. I'm pulling out, pulling up my Audible list here. Mm, 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 mm. What is this? And how emotions are made. Okay. Um, no, I don't want to download. Yes, I want to cancel that. Just, no, I just want, <laughs> don't download. Yes, I want to cancel. I just want the details. View book details. Okay, this is called, if this works, How Emotions Are Made by Lisa Feldman Barrett, The Secret Life of the Brain. And the, uh, and, and she's talking about She's talking about uh, the idea of, among other things, the, the, the classic question of if a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? And people have been arguing back and forth on this for, for centuries. But her argument is, which I thought was really cool, it's like it all depends on what your definition of sound is. Because if you are thinking of the definition of sound as, uh, if you're thinking of definition of sound as, vibrations, vibrations in the air, well, sure, that, you know, the tree falling in the forest makes, makes the air vibrate and everything. But the thing is, just sheer vibrations in the air, that they don't mean anything. They're just noise, unless there is a brain, unless there's a person with a brain there to make sense of those vibrations, to take in those vibrations and to make sense of them in your brain. So in a very real sense, if the tree falls in the forest and there's no one to hear it, it's just making, it's just, it's just part of the, 
noise out in the world, and no one is there to understand it. So no, it doesn't make a sound. And um, the reason I'm going off on this is because uh, this idea of like, the one question, what do I want to do when I'm talking about, when I'm talking about content creation, that's kind of, that it's, it's kind of missing that whole thing. It's like you got the tree falling in the forest and it's making uh, sound waves, but no one's there to hear what you're picking up. And if, if you're doing everything that you want to do with your content creation and it's not resonating with people, then that's a problem. It's, certainly, if the whole, certainly if you want to be interacting with other people and if you want to have a following and you want to have an impact on the world and spread your message. So that's why you can't just ask that one question. You need to ask a bunch of them. And these are my top, 10, my top 27 questions that you need to ask. Um, you need this, if you do not have this already, you need a copy of this and you need to put it up on your wall and you will be amazed at the difference in your content. So that link is in the description below. So enough of me rambling. Let's check in with y'all. So back to the top <coughs> of the chat. Okay. CJ. Howdy, CJ. Good to see you. Howdy, William. MP Langerhart. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Glad you're here live, Jared. Um, let's see. And, uh, and, and, and for, forgive me, I'm not gonna, I, I'm, the, the new policy is, um, there are enough folks saying enough really cool things that it's not helpful for me to respond to every single comment. So, um, I'm glad you're here. Super stoked that you're here. Uh, the lovely life. Thanks for checking out the book. Hope it's helpful to you, which I'll tell more. I'll say more about that. Looks like, looks like NASA back there. Jeff says, what's update? Well, yeah, kind of, it kind of feels like it at one at sometimes. Um, yikes. That's one heck of a timeline says William. Yes, it is. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I, I, I've, um, I've, I've made some missteps in the past talking about cutting for Ninja and, you know, and different shows that this company has produced. I've, I've made some unwise choices in terms of how I uh, talk about that and how I interact with it. And so I've, I've been, uh, I've wanting to be, been, I've been wanting to be very careful about how that works and what I do or don't say, just because there are lawyers who would be happy to sue me. And n never mind executives who are like, dude, um, you need to leave, which would suck. Which would really, really suck. Blake says, I'm squirrel brained in my live shows. I've tried to rein it in, but still practicing. Work in progress, man. This is the most squirrel brained I've been in, in a live stream so far, I would say, for those of you who've been around to see the first, <laughs> the first few minutes where I'm just like, blah. So let's see. Rachel and Karen, good to see you, ladies. Howdy, howdy. Um, What's update? High five and fist bump to all of you people who can do dailies. Yes, that's kind of crazy. Mendel founded modern genetics by counting peas. Pea counting is highly underrated. <laughs> yeah. Blake Kirby, 55% of my watch time comes from one of my 730 videos. See? Yes, exactly. That is classic 80-20. Though, damn. Where? That's... Pardon me while I pull out my calculator. What's what's one divided by seven thirty? That's point oh oh. That that's point one. That's zero point one percent of Blake's videos is the are, is is the cause of is the source of over half his watch time. How nuts is that? How nuts is that? William says, currently more than 90% of my views come from less than 10% of my videos, especially considering two of my videos in the last week of thousands of views and normally my videos, so I have only 50 to 70. Very cool, man. And that's when you say, okay, how can we take, how can we take these big dog performers 
and how can we clone them? That is, damn people, like this, this is something that I need to think about more about myself, but damn, like if you listen to nothing else, uh, no, if you don't listen to nothing else, <laughs> pay attention to, to the other things we're talking about here. But man, uh, that just feels like to me, that's the truth bomb to me. Um, if you have something that is in that 20% of the inputs that's giving you 80% of the outputs, don't, don't force yourself to spend all the time on the other stuff that's not bringing in all those other, the rest of the results. See how you can clone your client or your idea or your video that's in that 20% or that 10% or your 5% or in Blake's case, the 0.1% that's bringing in that's uh, that's bringing in those crazy results. Uh, let's see, Harley Pebbly, having one client is like having a job with a single employer. Yes, hundred um, percent. What's up, Dave? What color is my parachute? It is the color of hustle right now. That's the color of my parachute. <laughs> I know. I know people like to talk about. The, the golden parachutes, but uh, we're working on it. We're working on that. Uh, yeah, says Rachel, gutted for Sean Durris. Yeah, that's, whew, man, oh man. Lewis is here, the man. Good to see you. Yes, Blake says, I'm working on building an email list of subscribers. I don't like the idea of YouTube or any platform controlling all of my contacts. That is the key right there. Who has control? Who has ownership? One of the single most valuable things, one of the most single valuable assets in any business is not the intellectual property necessarily, although that may be for some people. It's not, you know, it's not the things that you'd expect it to be. Nine out of 10 times, the most single valuable asset in any given business is the customer list, the client list, the subscriber list. The referral list, that's the kind of stuff that you need to guard with your life. And you need to treat those people like gold. May I just say again, I am stoked that you are here and I'm, and I'm grateful and thankful for your interaction because without, without you being here, it's just me spitting into, a, spitting into a microphone and a webcam. Corolla in Paris, Guten Tag. Uh, she says swoop is much better than the old one and she's growing so fast. Fantastic. Good for her. Okay. Howdy, Chris Floyd. Good to see you, man. Lewis. Yes, you do need an email list. Um, thank you for saying that, Blake, that, you're, that, that my emails are not at all spammy, valued offer every time, because I make a very specific point of doing that. I do not ever want to be that guy dropping out crap saying it just just for no for no reason it's like there has to be a benefit for you the the, the member of the email subscriber list it's got to be there has to be value if i ever want if i ever want to build this business into a business that replaces the income from me doing this here which I will just say very plainly, that is my aim. That is what I'm working for, to build a business that creates and, and provides so much value to you and uh, you times thousands and thousands and thousands. Um, I better damn well be giving and giving before I'm asking for return. Uh, let's see, Ruckus. Howdy, Ruckus. How can I bring value to someone else? One of the most valuable sentences for, co for content creation. Absolutely. Raising crazies. I don't always have time to watch you every time you post, but when I do, the emails remind me. Well, there you go. I'll keep doing them. <laughs> also, it's like it, it, it's interesting. Every once in a while, I, I'll, I'll look at the subscriber list, my email subscriber list, and I will see that that people have unsubscribed from the email list af uh, on, after a certain email goes out. And I'm just like, <laughs> really, people? Like, there was something really cool in that email 
as far as I'm concerned, and I'm pretty sure as a lot of other people are concerned, but if it's not connecting with that person and they're like, nah, I'm out of here, then my response is not to say, oh, please don't go. Please stay on my list. It's like, no. If, if what I'm offering of value is not resonating with people, then they need to go away. <laughs> and they need to find someone that will resonate with you and uh, with them and, and bring them value. But the fact of the matter is, if I have email subscribers on my list, if I have subscribers on my YouTube channel who don't watch the content and they just sit there and just don't engage, that's telling the email servers and that's telling the uh, YouTube algorithm that my content is not as good as it actually is. So encouragement to you, if you see people unsubscribing for your from your channel, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. That means that it leaves space for other people who actually care about engaging. Uh, Jared says, well, the, what do I want to create? That's great if you are the only one you're concerned with reaching. 100%. Preach, man. Yes. Um, Carissa Lee, what about the opposite of one? Too many baskets instead of just eggs in one basket. What does a balanced amount look like? That is an excellent question that doesn't have an easy answer because um, the fact of the matter is if you do too much, if you, if, you split your, uh, if you split your time and attention and your focus in too many places, um, you just get a lot of splattering and very little actually ends up happening. Um, there was a uh, there was a collab that I saw on Tim Schmoyer's video creators channel with a gentleman by the name of Grant. I don't know his last name, but he is the king of random. Is his channel millions of subscribers? Um, like the dude knows some knows, knows a thing or two about content creation and business building. And he says that the uh, in, to your point, Carissa, about having the eggs in too many baskets. Grant gave this analogy that stuck with me with about the idea of achieving success in something new is like drilling through a cement wall. Number one, it's hard work. It's not ever going to be easy. Number two, you have to have the right tools. But number three, you have to, uh, you have, to have singular focus with the task at hand with the right tools. So like you can have a masonry bit and you can start drilling through a cement wall, but man, if you don't stick to it, you're not going to make that hole in the wall. That's because that just doesn't happen easily. So I just got this image of achieving a fault, like you know, achieving success or whatever that means for you. Uh, you know, building a following on YouTube is like having a masonry bit drilling through a cement wall. And so there is a balance to be struck for sure, Carissa, in terms of staying focused on your, uh, on your task at hand and focusing on being present and excellent with your clients or with your content creation or whatever you're doing. But man, beware of just only having that one basket. Darius Britt. Uh, Jared says, there was one thing I remember Darius Britt saying, he focused on content he saw people searching for, created that content, and then followed up with content he knew they needed to hear. Sure. Very cool. Um, let's see here. D for Darius. I watched a movie. What's a valuable, what is a valuable message and how do I present it in a way that reaches and moves people, says What's Update. What is a valuable message and how do I present it in a way that reaches and moves people? Good question. Now, a valuable message is not one singular thing. It is completely dependent on who is receiving the message. Which is why it's so short-sighted to say, what do I want to do? What content do I want to create? That's important. That needs to happen. But the thing is, like, if you're wanting to create a message that is valuable, it will only be valuable to the extent that it is valuable to the people who receive it. So that's the number one, the number one response to that is, 
what is a valuable message and how do I present it in a way that reaches and moves people? You need to find out who you're talking to. This is exactly what we talk about in this. This is the checklist that you need to get. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, you need a copy of this. It is in the link. The link is in the description below this. You need to find out who you're talking to. You need to find out what they want, what they're scared about, what they are entertained by, what they expect in their content creation, what they don't expect in their content creation. Because only when you know that stuff about your people can you deliver content that they find valuable. And you don't get to be the judge of that. That's kind of like, that's kind of like me going to my wife and saying, hey, sweetie, I'm, I, uh, hey, hey, sweetie, I found, uh, I, I'm blanking on examples here. But basically, it's like, hey, look at me. I did this thing. It was really romantic, don't you think? And she, and she was just not at all resonating with what I'd done. Um, you know, if I go out and get a dozen roses and bring them home, in 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 the meantime, the uh, our, our our little son is being a pill, and the dink and the sink is full of dishes. Um, she's like, I I I I'm I'm not concerned with roses right now. I I I need some mental sanity, and I want these dishes to be cleaned up, and I don't want to have to do it. That's what would be, would be romantic to her at that point. So rambling, <laughs> rambling to the point of value is in the, uh, value is in the eye slash mind of the receiver and knowing what is going to be valuable and knowing how to present this message of valuable in a way that it will be received well is all about the audience and knowing what they want. High Tech Productions, thanks again for the concept of the thing under the thing. Absolutely. I cannot tell you. It's, it's, it is such a foundational idea of what the thing under the thing is. In fact, if you're hearing, if you're here on the stream and you're not familiar with the concept of the thing under the thing, I will, uh, it, it is something that if you get this, if you get this and you put it into place with your, with your audience, certainly with uh, what's update, what's asking is like, how do you get, get a valuable message and deliver it in the right way? Using the thing under the thing is a huge way to make that happen. So if you're not if you're not familiar with what the thing under the thing is, I will drop a link for a playlist. I put together a playlist on what the thing under the thing is, and I will I will put that in the description after we're done here. Thing under thing, and let's do that. Okay. Do, do, do. Let's update super press for this stuff. Okay. Lewis, what is the biggest thing you struggled with and how did you get over it? What is the biggest thing I've struggled with and how did I get over with? Did I get over it? That is a very good question. You know, the interesting thing is when I think about like what's been the biggest struggle, what's been the biggest struggle, um, there are a number of things that come to mind, but uh, in terms of what we're talking about here, one of the biggest challenges has been um, over the last 10 years, I started, I started, doing, uh, I, I started doing online business building 10 years ago, and so much of my time has been spent doing things other than doing the most important thing that makes a business stay in existence, and that is to sell things. Now, I know a number, I, I guaranteed some of you on here on the stream or on the replay here hear that, and you're like, ugh, selling, blah, 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 I'm not about selling. I'm an artist, I'm a creative, I don't want to sell. So let me just put it this way, the idea of persuading. Now, that's something that we all do every day of our lives. We all have to, uh, we, we all engage in persuasion in one form or another. And uh, we also engage in value exchange uh, in one form or another every day of our lives. And so if we want to 
if we want to move forward as creators doing this in a, in a way that's financially sustainable, you, there has to be a balance of staying, staying true to one's artistic integrity and also saying, what is the value exchange happening? And how can I offer, how can I offer so much value that people are willing to exchange that value, not only just in their time, in their attention, in their social media promotion of what you're doing, of what, of what I'm doing, but also with their finances. It's all about creating that kind of value that it, that that is the beginning point of an exchange where value is received back. So that is uh, that's been a that's ten years of me figuring out. Uh, of me banging my head against the wall and saying, selling is lame, people who sell are slimy and yucky and blech and I don't want to do it and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? My first, the first iterations of my businesses that I set up showed that. They didn't make any money. <laughs> and so uh, the, 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 I, I, I'm, I, I'm hugely encouraged uh, about how I've been learning and growing, how I've been learning about selling, and how about being aligned with the value that I'm offering into the world in such a way that empowers you to offer value to the world as well. And uh, so that's, that's the ongoing, that's the ongoing uh, number one thing that I'm working on, is to say, how can I build business to a point where it replaces my income from editing television? Let's see. Spencer Acoustics. I'm focused on one thing, building an acoustic guitar on my channel. I'm growing quickly, at least by my standards, but I want to grow faster. Would it be bad to add other working, woodworking videos? Um, I would say, Spencer Acoustics, it's not so much about would it be bad to add other woodworking videos. The question is, how can you get your stuff in front of more people? And the, and the, the number one way to do that is how can you collaborate with other people in your space and bring value to those people and uh, you know bring bring value to those people and 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 it, and in exchange again it's all about the exchange you are offering value and to to another creator who has a crowd and in exchange for that their crowd gets to know you and if they're a match for you, if they like you, then they'll come over and they will subscribe to your channel. And that's how you will grow faster. Um, a number of folks have said, um, well, I, well I, I will just flat out quote Tim Schmoyer here, who is at the very top of his game when it comes to coaching people on how to grow up their YouTube channels. The single, the single fastest way to grow your channel is to collaborate with other like-minded creators. And the number one way to do that is to bring value to that creator, however that works for you, and to make them look good. So, I, it's, 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 should you add other woodworking videos? Heck, man, if that's what you like, go for it. Um, you, can have, you can have your guitar build going on, uh, but otherwise, if you like, if, if, if there's other stuff that you really dig and you're into it, then sure, why not? But that's not going to be that's not necessarily going to be what's going to grow your channel, in my opinion. Uh, Lewis says, what do you feel, what do you do when you feel like you're invisible? I say, Lewis, I say, how can I be of service? When I am invisible, when, I, when, I, when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling like I'm not where I want to be, Nine out of ten times, I'm feeling that way because I'm focused on the way I feel. So when I shift that context and I say, I'm feeling like crap, I'm really feeling down, I'm really feeling bummed, I'm feeling invisible, the number one way for me to snap out of that is to say, how can I give to someone else? How can I be of service? That's my, that, that's my offering on that. Um, most YouTubers advise Spencer Acoustics. Uh, yeah, I think we talked about that. Vid Jared says, VidIQ has a feature 
content audit and a section called content double down. Great way to identify popular content. Very cool. Very cool, very cool. Jab, 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 right hook, says Harley Pebbly. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Going back up. Creativity comes from passion, says Knockout Media. Agreed. Absolutely. It has to start. Creativity comes from passion, says Knockout Media. Yes. You have to... You, that's where it has to start. Because if you don't care about what you're doing, man, people will, be, people will tell that. People will know that. And it's... Uh, and, 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 you know, if you're... Not, like, if I'm not excited about this stuff, why on earth would anyone else be? And why would anyone want to hear me talk about stuff that I don't care about? But let me tell you, I get to do this. I get to do this. I get to tell stories for, I, for, for, one of the, for some of the biggest media outlets on the face of the planet. I get to tell stories that are seen by millions of people on a show like American Ninja Warrior that is spreading the fruit of the spirit. It's spreading light and optimism and hope and encouragement and entertainment. I get to be part of that. And I get to do the same, like, variations of that in, in my YouTube channel. It's like, I love it. <laughs> I just absolutely love this stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. It's like, uh, it, it does. This number, one, this number one question, like, what do I want to do? It is absolutely important, and you need to keep that in mind. It's just that it can't, that cannot, cannot be the only question that you ask. Let's see. Karen Sowers, that's what I told my husband many times. I'd rather have you help me with some chores than a bunch of flowers. There you go. Let's see. All righty, folks. <laughs> Javier, Jeff dropping such life truth bombs on the live feed today. Well, cool, man. Glad it's, glad it's resonating with you. And uh, I'm super excited because uh, Javier reached out to me. Uh, Javier has a super cool podcast that I will actually drop a link to that in the con in the description later on uh, called Passion in Progress. And Javier does uh, he he does these uh, he does podcast interviews with people who are passionate about what they do and about learning and growing. And so he reached out to me to say, "Hey, I'm going to be in LA. Can we talk? Can we set up a time to do that?" So uh, really looking forward to that. So at this point, it is. It is coming up to the top of the hour, and that means that I need to uh, wrap this up very soon. So really, um, I just want to make sure that you guys know that, uh, number one, I appreciate you, and I love that you're here. Um, I love interacting with you, and I just want you, uh, I want you to be encouraged that you are we are all living a story. We are all telling a story, and we have stories that the world needs to hear. And I'm telling, it's like the way that technology has changed the viewing landscape and the, the media consumption landscape, it's like it's no longer about three major television networks in the, if, if, for those of us in the United States. It's no longer about just like four major motion, motion picture studios in the U.S. Everyone can get exactly what they want. They can find any specific niche on any content that they want, which means that if you are here and you are creating content, there is an audience for you, period. There is an audience for what you have to offer, which is why you need to keep doing what you're doing. You need to keep telling your stories and you need to keep offering them to the world because you matter, your message matters, and the world needs to hear what you have to say. It's been so good hanging out with you. Uh, hit that thumbs up button if this has been helpful, and I will talk with you soon.